wikihow 6, not 8. https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash get dash rid dash of dash a dash nickname. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash host dash and dash event dash in dash school. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash be dash that dash girl dash everyone dash is dash jealous dash of. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash stay dash safe dash on dash a dash field dash trip. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash change dash a dash girl percent sign 27s dash mind. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash give dash a dash girl dash space. Categories Youth How to get rid of a nickname Download article Parts 1. Challenging the nickname 2. Reaffirming your chosen name Other sections Questions and answers Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Author info. Last updated, the 18th of November, 2023. People develop nicknames, both friendly and unfriendly, for all sorts of reasons. Often. Nicknames can be hurtful, sometimes you just don't identify with the name, or maybe. You think it makes you sound too childish. Nicknames, especially well-established ones, can be hard to get rid of. Correct people who use the nickname and reassert the name. You want to be known by. Remember that a nickname is only a name, and it does not. Represent the person you are. Part 1. Challenging the nickname. Download article 1. Don't answer to a nickname you don't like. If someone has started calling you by a mean nickname, or something that you don't like, the first step is not to respond. He might be calling you by this nickname to try and get a rise from you, so try to ignore it, or just raise an eyebrow and walk on. 1. 2. Ask friends to stop using a nickname. If it's your friends who are calling you by the nickname, they might not realize that you don't like it. Calmly explain to them that it makes you feel bad, and you'd like it if they would stop calling you by the nickname. Good friends will understand and won't want to hurt your feelings. 2. You could say guys. I know you think it's funny to call me Zack Attack. But I really don't like that nickname. Just call me Zachary, my real name. Okay. 3. Correct an introduction. There may be occasions when a friend introduces you to somebody by your nickname. This is a good opportunity to challenge the nickname and assert what you want to be called. If your friend introduces you by saying hi, this is my friend Bobby. You can calmly just say, hi. Actually, it's just Bob. This will help ensure that the person you are meeting knows not to you. Use your nickname, while also showing your friend that you prefer to be called by your chosen name. If you are in any group situation and somebody uses your nickname, you can correct him like this. Over time, people will stop using your nickname if you correct them. 3. 4. Deal with a bully calling you by a nickname. If the person calling you by a nickname is a bully, it will be harder to confront them. You should try to just ignore them, and not let them see that they have upset you or got to you. Try to look confident and give off the 
impression that the name calling is too stupid to think about. Bullies want to take power away from you and make you scared. If you can demonstrate that it's not working, they might lose interest. 4. If bullies call you a name, you can show that you're not intimidated or scared by looking them in the eyes, laughing, and then just walking away without looking back. You could say something like here we go again. This is boring or why are you talking to me? You could say I don't know why you keep calling me that, but it's boring. And I don't care. Don't get angry or upset. That could encourage a bully to just use their mean nickname more often. 5. 5. Talk to an authority figure. Mean name calling is bullying and you don't have to put up with it. If you have tried ignoring and then challenging the name calling, but it continues to happen, talk to an authority figure. Reporting the name calling will alert your school to what's going on, and they can keep an eye on the situation. If it's upsetting you, stick close to your friends for support. A good network of friends can be really helpful if you are being bullied. Part 2 Reaffirming your chosen name Download article 1. Sign off messages with your name An important part of getting rid of a nickname, and making sure it doesn't come back, is reaffirming your chosen name. One of the ways you can do this is by signing off messages with this name. For example, make the effort to Sign off an email or text with your name. Just writing, OK, see you later. Jill at the end of an email will get your friends more used to seeing this name. If you are leaving a voicemail message, use your name at the start. You could say hi, Jan, it's Jill here. 2. Use your chosen name in conversation. Drop your chosen name into conversation too. Try and fix it in the minds of your friends. Soon they will associate you with your chosen name and not the nickname. You have to be a little bit subtle with this, and avoid referring to yourself in the third person. For instance, when telling a story about what you did at the weekend don't say Jill went shopping. You can drop your name into conversation by reporting a conversation or what someone said to you. For example, you could say and then Jan said to me, Jill, what happened to the pizza? 6. 3. Introduce yourself at the start. You can affirm your chosen name by being positive. When you meet people or are in a group situation, if you show initiative, and introduce yourself before somebody else introduces you, you get to choose what name is used. Get in there first to fix your chosen name in people's minds. Just introduce yourself casually by saying hey, everyone. I'm Jill. 4. Remember that nicknames don't last forever. If you're having a hard time. Getting people to stop calling you by a nickname, you can take some comfort in. Remembering that nicknames don't last forever. As you get older, people will use nicknames less and less. As you meet new people and have new experiences, things like nicknames change too. 7. If your friends continue to use a nickname you don't like even, after you have explained how it upsets you, consider if they are really your friends. If someone keeps making you angry or on purpose and doesn't care about your feelings, they are not your friend. Stay away from them as much as you can. Often people use nicknames as a sign of affection, and this changes as you get older and more mature. 8. 
a nickname is only a name and does not always represent who you are. Community Q&A Question A friend of a friend, who I met three times, calls me a nickname about my blonde hair. I'll believe he doesn't know it bothers me, but every time I see him, I'll can't tell him to stop. What can I do? Community answer. The next time they use the nickname, just correct them by reminding them what your actual name is. Not helpful 8 helpful 24. Question. What can I do if my entire family, including grandparents and aunt forward slash uncles, call me by the name that my cousin gave me when they were very small? Community answer. Ask them to stop, and explain why it bothers you. Ask your parents to help by reminding the rest of the family not to use the nickname. Don't respond to the nickname when it's used, and try the other methods described in the article. Not helpful 3 helpful 22. How to host an event in school. Download article. Co-authored by Stephanie Chu Leong. Last updated, the 26th of August, 2022 references. Gone are the days of stuffy school events, let's have some fun. A school event is a great way to spread awareness, raise some money, or just have a good time. Hosting an event is actually easier than you may think. With proper planning and preparation, you can avoid feeling overwhelmed and keep things running smoothly. We've put together a handy list of things you can do to make your school event a great one. 1. Write down the goal or goals of your event. Download article. Use them to help guide your event planning. It's easy to get lost in the maze of event planning. So start off on the right foot by setting clear goals that you hope to accomplish with your event. They could be things like raising awareness for an issue, raising funds for a project, or just having some fun and entertainment. Jot down your goals and use them to help plan out various aspects of your event. 1. For instance, let's say you're holding a fundraising event for new uniforms for your school's basketball team. You could include info about how to donate, use images of the new uniform design, and ask one of the basketball players to speak at the event. 2. Make an agenda for longer events. Download article. Structure your event with a well-planned agenda. An agenda is a document that outlines your event schedule. If you have a longer event with lots of different sections, speakers, and guests, it's a simple way to keep everyone on the same page and keep things running smoothly. Draft a document that lists the sessions of your event in order, includes the names of the speakers, and mentions the theme or subject of each session. 2. For example, if you're hosting an event for a school election, you could include agenda items such as Principal Johnson welcomes students, Jack Smith discusses the importance of voting in elections, senior class candidates give campaign speeches and so on. Print out copies of your agenda to hand out to guests and other speakers so people can follow along. 3. Create a budget for your event. Download article. Allocate your money for your event's costs and expenses. Start by calculating how much money you have to spend for your event. Then. Set aside the necessary funds for things like renting a venue, hiring a band, and snacks and concessions. Be sure to allocate funds for 
decorations and supplies like paper and ink for printing flyers. 3, 4. 4. Secure a venue for in-person events. Download article. Choose the space you'll use to host your event. Find a space that can adequately host and support your event and reserve it for the day of your event. If you're hosting your event at your school, you may be able to use your school's gym, auditorium, or outdoor space to hold it. If you're planning to host your event off campus, look for venues in your area and reserve one. 5. If you plan to have performers or use media such as music or slide shows, make sure the venue you choose can support them. Make sure the event space has enough seating to accommodate your guests or organize a way to set up chairs for people to use. 5. Live stream virtual events. Download article. Choose a platform to host your virtual event. If you can't gather in person, there are a ton of ways you can host your event virtually. Platforms such as Zoom and Google Meet make it easy for folks to log in and attend your event. Select a platform and create your event so you can send out links to invite folks to your event. 6. For example, you can make an event on Zoom and it'll generate a Zoom meeting link, which you can then include in your event's invites and social media. When the event starts, all people need to do is click on the link and there. In 6. Put up posters and hand out flyers. Download article. Get people's attention to promote your school event. Make some fun and attractive posters that advertise what your event is about as well as when and where it is. Put up posters in high traffic areas in your school, such as hallways and the cafeteria. You can also send out a digital image by email or on social media to spread the word and build up interest. 7. Make sure it's okay for you to put up posters in your school. Be sure to clearly state how people can attend your event. For instance, your poster could say something like, Where? The gym. When? Friday at 3.30, or look up the Art for Change event page on Facebook for a link to the virtual event. 7. Promote your event on social media. Download article. Use updates and content to get the word out. Whether you're hosting your event virtually or in person, social media is an invaluable tool you can use to spread awareness. Create an event page for your event and include graphics and text that tells people what it's all about and where. It'll be located. Invite people to like your event page and post a link to the page on your own social media so people can find it. 8. You can also check with your school's principal to see if you can get a link to your event page posted on the school's website and social media as well. 8. Rehearse hosting your event. Download article. Practice in front of your friends, family, or mirror. Plan out what you're going to say at your event and rehearse it as many times as it takes to memorize it. Put together an audience using your friends or family members so you can practice in front of real people and get some feedback. The more you rehearse hosting your event, the more comfortable you'll feel. 9. It's okay to feel nervous. With practice and preparation, you'll be able to handle it like a pro. 9. Start your event with a quote, joke, or anecdote. 
download article. Grab people's attention from the beginning. Use an icebreaker to get your guests and yourself comfortable and ready to engage in the event. An interesting story or a good quote can set the tone and get people to start paying attention right from the start. 10. For instance, if you're hosting a talent show, you could start with a joke like, Hi everybody, before we begin, we need to do a quick mic check. Will everyone named Michael please stand up? This concludes the mic check. 10. Introduce your speakers or performers. Download article. Warm up the audience for your guests. If your event has multiple sessions or performances, introduce them before they start so your audience knows who's up next. You could also give a little intro that briefly explains what they'll be doing or discussing so your guests know what to expect. 11. For example, you could say something like, up next, we've got Sarah Miller to tell us the history of our school's chess club and how your donations can help keep them going. 11. Stay calm if something doesn't go according to plan. Download article. Take a deep breath and keep a cool head. While you can definitely plan and organize to avoid major problems, the truth is, you may have some hiccups at your event. Someone may forget to bring a power cord. Or you may not have enough pamphlets. It's okay. Keep calm so everyone else follows your lead. Do what you can to solve the problem with a level head. 12. According to Murphy's Law, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. 13. 12. Conclude the event by thanking everyone. Download article. Thank your guests and attendees for coming to wrap things up. After each of your speakers or performers is finished, thank them for participating. When your event is finished, thank everyone involved and your guests for participating and then conclude the event. 14. You could say something like, thank you to Principal Brown for letting us use this space, and thank you so much for coming out and supporting us. Expert Q&A Question How do I plan a school event? Stephanie Chu Leong Owner and Senior Event Planner, Stellify Events Expert Answer Determine how much you have to spend as a budget and be sure to stay within it. Not helpful zero helpful for Ask a question Submit Tips If you have a few people helping you with the event, try assigning tasks to make the work easier. For example, you could have one person design posters, one person manage social media, and one person put up and hand out flyers. How to be that girl everyone is jealous of. Download article. Steps. Steps. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. Co-authored by Luke Abusers. Last updated, the 3rd of May, 2023. You always want to be the girl everyone admires and make girls jealous. Studies show that girls get ready in the morning to impress other girls. Now be that one that girls. Boys aren't threatened by, but are impressed by with these easy tips. Steps Download article 1. Be active and fit. You don't have to do a sport, just try to be up and moving for at least one hour a day. Sometimes physical exercise does that for you. Don't just give up, 
it may be a lot of work, but when you're older you're going to be thankful for a fit body. Cute butts are key to attracting a guy's attention, but it doesn't have to be huge. 17. Magazine is a great read, and it gives you health tips in every issue. 2. Brush and floss your teeth morning and night. Always drink water throughout the day it keeps your breath fresh. Chew mint gum or have mints with you. Take a shower every day and after every workout. Wash your face with an amazing face wash. And then tone your skin and apply a moisturizer. If you have acne, spend money to get a really good face wash. Make sure to shave your legs every day, whether it's gym or if you want to wear shorts. When you get out of the shower put a nice smelling lotion on, and then spray yourself with matching perfume. Spray the perfume while you're in a towel. And after you get dressed, some good lotions and perfumes come from Bath and Body Works. 3. Wash your hair daily with a good shampoo and conditioner, and never skimp on one or the other. Get your hair trimmed or cut every six weeks. This improves hair growth and gets rid of unsightly split ends. On the weekends, try to find out which products are best for your hair. If you straighten your hair, wear it natural on the weekends, and don't straighten it every day or you will get split ends. Wear which hairstyle makes you feel most comfortable. If you choose, deep condition your hair once a week, this improves the health of your hair and this tends to add shine. Healthy hair also grows faster. 4. Always have your nails done professionally. In the summer, have your nails done in bright colors, i.e. hot pink, purple, turquoise. In the spring, have your nails done in pastel colors, i.e. greens, baby pinks and blues. In the fall, have your nails done in earth tones, i.e. greens, oranges, reds. And in the winter, have your nails done in darker colors. To make them pop, i.e. dark red, dark blue, dark purple. Remember French manicures are good for any season. Remember, natural is always in two. 5. Consider getting your ears pierced. One piercing is good, but if you want a little diamond or colored stud get a second. That way you have the option of wearing one or two earrings. Or, try to have a perfect pair of earrings and jewelry for every outfit. 6. Wear flattering makeup. Makeup should be used to enhance your beauty, not to cover up flaws, so try to clear your skin. Mascara is a must-have as well as lip gloss. If you have pimples you can cover them using a bit of concealer. Just make sure you use the right color for your skin. Don't wear too much makeup. Keep it light and simple and don't be heavy-handed. Subtlety is the key to enhancing your natural beauty. It is too easy to fall into buying too many things, but try to go with the specific makeup and tools that match your taste. Buy only the products that you will actually use on an everyday basis. 7. Wear some cute clothes that complement your figure. The clothes you wear should make you feel comfortable. Try to pick your outfits the night before you go to school or an event, so in the morning you have more time to focus on makeup and hair. Don't be intimidated by other girls' outfits if they are really cute. Just compliment her and be the better person. Use her as a role model and try to find outfits in the stores instead of just buying shirts and pants. 8. 
Remember to be confident and that you look beautiful. Add your own personal style to your outfits, hair or makeup. Get highlights, wear bright colored eyeliner or eyeshadow, or wear the same necklace with every outfit. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Don't listen to what other guys or girls say, because when girls make fun of other girls, they have low self-esteem and are trying to make someone else feel bad. Don't let a guy influence all of your decisions. Someone out there will love you for you. Stay active. People respect other people who take care of their bodies. Show more tips. You are beautiful the way you are, and you shouldn't listen to anyone who tells you. Otherwise, submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. Warnings. When people become jealous of you, you may get a lot of hate. The best way to deal with it is to have a solid group of friends behind you. Be nice. People will like you better if you smile and are friendly. How to stay safe on a field trip. Download article. Parts. 1. Staying physically safe. 2. While dining out. 3. Avoiding sickness. Other sections. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Alison Broneman, Ph.D. Last updated, the 4th of July, 2024. Many parents are relaxed and even want their children to go on field trips. On the other hand, other parents may be on the uneasy side and are concerned about the safety of their children on the field trips. Worries about getting lost, following strangers, going to unsafe places, and behaving inappropriately are common things that parents worry about. To ease your parents' worries, here is how to stay safe during a field trip. Part 1. Staying physically safe. Download article. 1. Memoize your parents' phone numbers ahead of time. If you are young or if you don't have a phone with your parents' contacts, memoize your parents' phone numbers. In case there is an emergency in which you need to call them, write down their phone numbers on an index card and bring it with you in a small bag. In that bag, put a water bottle, notebook, and a lunchbox if you are eating lunch at the location. If you don't have a phone but need to call your parents, ask a teacher for help. They may allow you to use their phone. If you are indoors, such as in a hotel, you may ask a member of staff to use their phones. 2. Be careful when crossing the road. If you and your classmates are crossing the road, make sure you know some basic road safety. Look both ways when crossing the road. 1. This is to make sure that a car doesn't suddenly come at you when crossing, which is very dangerous. Walk fast, but don't run when crossing the road, as you could fall. Don't cross the road when there is a red light at the pedestrian crossing, because other vehicles will be driving on the street. Even if no vehicles are crossing, don't walk over. A car could suddenly come over. 3. Follow your group at all times. Usually, your teachers will divide students up into groups before the trip or after you get off the bus. Follow your group at all times to make sure you don't wander off. Make sure that you see kids from your school around you. This ensures that you are in your group at all times. If you zone out for some time, your group may have gone somewhere else already. If you need to go to the bathroom, ask a chaperone or teacher for assistance. Then, 
they will show you where the bathroom is and stay near it for you to catch up. 4. Don't wander off to another place without permission. If you decide to sneak out to another room of a museum, you may come back to find out that your group has disappeared. Plus, you will probably get in trouble. Ask for permission from a teacher. First. 5. Bring a friend to the restroom with you. It's best to not go alone if you need to go to the bathroom. For younger kids, the teacher likely assigned partners in case they need to go to the restroom. If you are a preteen, ages 8 to 12, take your best friend or a nice classmate you know to the restroom. Your friend could look out to see where the group has gone, minimizing the chance that you get lost in the museum. You can take turns looking out for each other while using the restroom. 6. Ask for help if you are lost. If you are lost, ask for help. If you are in an indoor area, for example, a museum or hotel, find the front desk, usually located on the first floor, and ask a member of staff to help you. Say which school you are from and your name to help the Staff find your group. If you have a phone, call one of your friends or a teacher. Don't ask a person who doesn't look like staff, you don't know what their intentions are, plus they may not know how to help you. Part 2. While dining out. Download article. 1. Don't eat too much unhealthy food. If you're staying at a place for a few days for a field trip, you may get to enjoy the cuisine at the hotel. However, don't take this field trip as an excuse to eat junk food when your parents aren't here. It isn't a wise decision because you'll constantly be moving. If you get a stomach ache, it will be difficult for you to find a good time and place to use the restroom when everyone is moving quickly. 2. Avoid food that triggers allergies. Always remember what types of food allergies you have. If you have food allergies, tell the teacher if you haven't yet, and bring an allergen. Free snack in case you are hungry. If you will be eating at restaurants, find something that doesn't trigger your allergies on it. You can always ask the waiter for the specific ingredients just to make sure. Part 3. Avoiding Sickness Download Article 1. Clean up after yourself after eating. Don't eat in places that are difficult to clean, like your hotel bed or on the bus. It will be a hassle for people to clean after if you don't clean up after yourself. While eating out, wipe your mouth, and be careful not to make food. Bits fall onto the table. 2. Place a seat cover on the toilets while using the restroom. Most restrooms have disposable seat covers that you can put on the toilet seat. There are millions of tiny germs and bacteria that you can't see on the toilet seats of public bathrooms, since so many people go and sit on them every day. So, to reduce the risk of getting sick, put something on the toilet seat. If there aren't any covers, use toilet paper. You could also try hovering over the toilet seat to pee if you are a female. Make sure you are aiming in the toilet and not to the sides, this will get messy if you do so. 3. Always wash your hands. Wash your hands after a meal and after you use the bathroom. Public places have a lot of germs, so wash your hands after eating a meal and after using the bathroom. If you are on your period, wash your hands before and after. You change your sanitary products to reduce the risk of infection.
if you touch something like a handrail, a bus seat, or another public structure, use hand sanitizer to freshen up your hands. 4. Wear a mask if you show signs of sickness. If you aren't sure if you are sick, start wearing a mask. Bring a few masks in case you are becoming sick or if people around you are getting sick. For example, if someone you share a hotel room with is sick, wear a mask when you are near them. If you do show signs of sickness, tell a teacher. Even if it's a simple cold, you should still recover at home. This also prevents your illness from spreading to more students. They can call your parents to send you home to recover. In the meantime, freshen up with hand sanitizer and practice bathroom hygiene. If you get struck with diarrhea, practice bathroom hygiene and use seat covers when using the bathroom. Make sure to wash your hands frequently. Expert Q&A Ask a question Submit Tips Submit a tip All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit References 1 https forward slash forward slash www.splog.com forward slash crossroad safely forward slash About this article Co-authored by Alison Broneman, Ph.D. Clinical Psychologist This article was co-authored by Alison Broneman, Ph.D. Dr. Alison Broneman is a licensed clinical psychologist with a private practice based in the San Francisco Bay Area, providing psychotherapy and neuropsychology services. With over a decade of experience, D.R. Broneman specializes in in-depth psychotherapy to provide solution-focused treatments for anxiety, depression, relationship problems, grief, adjustment problems, traumatic stress, and phase of life transitions. And as part of her neuropsychology practice, she integrates depth psychotherapy and cognitive rehabilitation for those recovering after traumatic brain injury. Dr. Broneman holds a BA in psychology from the University of California, Santa Cruz, and an MS. and PhD in clinical psychology from Palo Alto University. She is licensed by the California Board of Psychology and is a member of the American Psychological Association. This article has been viewed 2,991 times. How to change a girl's mind. Download article. Methods. 1. Changing an acquaintance. 2. Getting out of the friend zone. 3. Talking to a stranger. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article Summary Co-authored by Erica Kaplan Last updated, the 6th of February, 2023 Being rejected by a girl is just another part of growing up. Everyone is entitled to their own opinions. Sometimes girls can be stubborn and pretend they don't like you for any number of reasons. In some cases they really mean no but in other scenarios you have another chance. Method 1. Changing an acquaintance Download article 1. Recognize her behavior If you don't know her very well, you might mistake her appearance as a rejection. Some people just have certain quirks. It doesn't always mean that she isn't interested. Notice if she smiles when you talk to her, or if she laughs at things you say. 1. Don't mistake laughing with you with laughing at you. 2. Make eye contact. 
Creating sexual tension with eye contact can create a healthy attraction. Never stare at a girl. This is just a rude thing to do. Instead make short glances at her and look at her eyes. Hopefully she'll meet your eye contact and then turn away. Continue this until you both hold eye contact longer than the previous time. 3. Be yourself. Girls don't like guys who are pretending to be someone else. They'll like you. For you. If you were pretending to be someone else before, then just be yourself. She. Might like you if you relax and stop trying to change for other people. 4. Ask her friends. Friends of a girl you like are usually easier to talk to. Be casual and ask. About the girl you like. Say something like, does Jessie have a boyfriend? Or, what's Jessie's type? They'll either tell you or they won't. The important thing is that. They'll probably tell the girl and the more they talk about you, the better your chances. Ah. Uh, 5. Be flexible. Continue being yourself, but if there are certain thoughts you have that might be rude, keep them to yourself. There's always some give and take, so make sure you're not being a jerk. Girls like it when you show that you can be chill and enjoy yourself no matter what you're doing. 6. Recognize the player. Sometimes a girl enjoy playing with a guy's heart, and sometimes it's a flirting tactic. Even though she says she doesn't like you, she might want you to try harder to get her attention. The key is to become better friends with her and spend more time together. You'll know her real intentions by her body language and the vibes she's sending. 2. 7. Be direct. Once you've become a little bit closer with this girl, you can try again. You have to vary the way you present yourself to her. She may not have liked what you said to her the first time. If she says no or looks really uncomfortable, don't force it. Be honest to her. Quiz. Wiki how quiz, does she like me? Some girls can feel like a total mystery. How can you figure out if she likes you just as a friend or if she wants something more? Take this quiz to find out. 1 of 12. How do her friends treat you? They told me that she likes me. They giggle and laugh with her when I walk into the room. They've mentioned her in conversation. They haven't done anything out of the ordinary, or I don't know them. Next. Method. 2. Getting out of the friend zone. Download article. 1. Know her type. Being friends with her will give you access to what she's looking for in a guy. You could even casually ask her if she thinks Jim Smith is attractive, and then find out why. Talking about her attraction to other boys may remind her of your feelings. 2. Stay on her good side. If she has put you in the friend zone, you have one thing going. For you, she doesn't mind being around you. Don't mess this up by annoying her and pestering her for a romantic date. This will take time if it's even possible. Allowing yourself to be a little bit vulnerable around her. Your communication should not be all fun and jokes all the time. Instead, try to be more vulnerable sometimes and confide in her just a little bit. Without oversharing. 3. Recognize flirting. Sometimes a girl will act like she put you in the friend zone, but... Sometimes she's interested in you. Friends can become big influences on how she acts towards you. Notice her actions, 
gestures, and hints such as smiling and laughing when things aren't that funny. Pay attention if she is noticeably worried about her appearance around you. 3. 4. 4. Flirt with her. This can be tricky because you don't want to appear too attached or engrossed by her. Acting somewhat disinterested will make her more interested. Create a strange balance of cute gestures and slight bullying in a playful way. 4. Remember that body language is an important part of flirting. Face yourself, as well as your legs and feet, towards her when you are speaking to her. Pat her gently on the shoulder or on the leg as you are playfully flirting, and remember about the eye contact. Do not go overboard with bullying her or else she won't want to be friends at all. Being sarcastic can go a long way. 5. Tell her your feelings. Open yourself up to her. Sometimes you really need to put yourself in the spotlight. Try to say it casually and to her face. 5. Try something like. I know we've been friends for a while, but I've started to develop feelings for you. Her name. I like you. 6. Ask her out. She probably won't tell you she likes you back. Once the seed of your feelings has been planted in her mind, invite her out. See if she wants to go to the movies. Play laser tag, or bowl with you over the weekend. This will make her think of how she sees you. She'll decide if it is a date or not. The decision is always hers. You should know what she likes to do. Pick something to do where you can both let loose and have fun. Method 3. Talking to a stranger Download article 1. Observe this girl. Don't stalk her to find out what she is doing. Casually look for clues. When she is nearby. Notice if she is reading a book whenever you see her. Observe what she is wearing. Does she like wearing a sublime t-shirt? Look her up on social media. Everyone stalks each other on social media sites, so you don't need to feel guilty about doing it. Look at her interests. 2. Take on a common interest. Only do this if you are interested in this interest. Don't. Start wearing a Shania Twain t-shirt if you don't like her music. Pick up a book that she's. Reading. You want to have a genuinely shared connection. Pretending won't get you. Anywhere. 3. Say something in passing. There is a chance she had never seen you before, and didn't. Want to take a chance? Start saying hello to her whenever you pass her. Small gestures of kindness can go a long way. Hopefully she'll respond or smile back to you. You could ask her what time it is. Compliment her outfit by saying, that's a pretty dress or work with what she's wearing. 4. Be funny. A good way for this girl to recognize what a good catch you are is to be funny. Telling knock-knock jokes may not work. Showcase your natural humor when she is nearby. Don't be offensive and tell inappropriate jokes. She could get offended or creeped out by this. 5. Hold a conversation. Try to strike up a natural conversation about something. This can be hard because you are trying to appear casual when you may not feel casual. Wait for a good opportunity like waiting for an elevator or stuck waiting for the bus. These are good places to share a thought. You are shooting for her to look at you and actually talk to you. 
talk about an easy topic like the weather or a recent celebrity's antics. 6. Be friendly to her friends. You can try to approach her friends and ask questions about this girl. Even if you just do small gestures, they could think it's sweet and tell the girl you like. You really just want her group of friends to notice you and think you're nice. Once you have conversations circling around about you, you will have a better shot. 7. Ask her out again. Be sure not use the same line or approach as you did before. You want to catch her off guard, but also impress her. Try complimenting her as you do this. 8. Respect her decision. She is entitled to her decisions and you need to respect that. Nobody likes someone who complains when they don't get what they want. How to give a girl space. Download article. Co-authored by Elizabeth Weiss, PSYD and Eric McAleur. Last updated. The 13th of September, 2023 References Perhaps you are in a committed relationship or you just started dating a woman you really like. In your mind, things might be going well, so when she asks for space, you might be feeling a bit perplexed. Or perhaps things have been rocky for a while, and she's asking for space to sort things out in her head. Know that space can sometimes help bring couples even closer together. So give her what she wants by communicating differently, enjoying your own life, and letting your relationship grow over time. 1. Define space together. Download article. If she asks for space and you're confused, calmly ask her to clarify what she means. Different people have different needs, and it's really important that you understand what she's asking for here. If she says she needs space, say something like, I have no problem honoring your request, but can you tell me a little bit more about what you need? 1. Don't shout, get frustrated, or shut down. Just listen. 2. Depending on how she's feeling, she may want more personal space. In this case, you may have been a little clingy for her tastes. She may ask you to back off a bit or stop prying into her personal life. This is common in new relationships, so don't worry. More freedom. If the relationship is new, she may still be Getting used to the adjustment. If it's an established relationship, she may simply miss her friends or spending some time alone. A break. A formal break means that you're putting the relationship on pause. If this happens, don't worry. A break is not a breakup in most cases. It typically just means she needs time to process her feelings and figure out what she wants. 3. 2. Take her at her word. Download article. Women do not speak in riddles or code, so don't read into things. If she tells you she wants a little bit of time to relax or catch up on schoolwork, don't assume she's about to break up with you or anything. Like that. The worst thing you can do when a girl asks for space is to overanalyze the situation, so don't. It may seem odd, but this is a good thing. By telling you what she needs, she's giving you a roadmap to building a successful relationship. 4. If she has the courage to tell you she wants a little room to do her own thing, She'd have the courage to say she wants to see other people or split up. Remember, no amount of pressure, complaining, or 
Wu Ying is going to change her mind. The best thing you can do at this point is honor her request, even if it sounds a little painful right now. Things will get better. 3. Don't contact her at all if she requests that. Download article. If she explicitly asks for you to let her be, don't push it. The worst mistake you can make when she wants more space is to ignore her needs. If she asks for a few days or weeks of alone time, give it to her. It doesn't mean your relationship is doomed or anything, but it's definitely going to be in trouble if you can't honor her request to let her be. 5. If she said she still wants to talk or hang out but she just wants more room to do her own thing, it's totally fine to stay in contact. Just don't pester her with invasive questions or complain about her hanging out with other people. That's only going to drive her away. 4. Back off and treat this as an opportunity. Download article. Everybody needs some personal space to engage in things they like. Realize that she isn't going out of her way to hurt you, she just wants some privacy and freedom. As hard as it may be, try to reframe your perspective and look at the upside here. If she's out pursuing things she enjoys, you have the space to do things you enjoy. 6. If she has asked you to stop prying into her personal life, just keep things light. Stay away from investigative questions about who she's hanging out with or what she's doing. If she wants more time to do things on her own, celebrate it. Encourage her to go out with her friends and have fun. 5. Pursue your own passions. Download article. Go do things you enjoy. If you have an instrument you play or a game you love, spend your time doing that. If you love playing sports, spend a few extra days shooting hoops or playing tennis. If you were spending a lot of time with her before, you may find yourself with a lot of free time on your hands. Fill that time with fun activities and hobbies to keep yourself from wallowing or getting down. 7. If you don't know how to spend your sudden influx of free time, now is the perfect time to pick up a new hobby. If you aren't on a no-contact break, there's nothing wrong with inviting her along or telling her about the things you're doing in your spare time. If you sit around worrying about what she's doing or feeling bad that she isn't here, no good is going to come of it. Not only is it healthy to pursue things you care about, but it's a great way to keep your mind from going to a negative place. 6. Hang out with your friends and family. Download article. Socializing with other people you care about is a great way to spend your time. Look at this as an opportunity to reconnect with friends you haven't seen in a while, or meet new people. If you're invited to any parties or social gatherings, go spend time with your family as well. The more connected you are to other people in your life, the happier you're going to be. 8. This is a great time to reconnect with old friends you haven't had time for while you were spending all of your time with your partner. If you're on a break and the two of you are no longer going steady, she may want to date other people. If this is the case, try going on a date or two of your own. Companionship is always healthy, especially if you're dealing with a painful pause on your relationship right now. 7. Build your confidence. Download article. 
the better you feel about yourself, the more likely you are to win. Over. Work out every week by running or lifting weights, and eat a healthy diet full of lean proteins, vegetables, and whole grains. Seek advice from people you respect and listen to them. If you're behind at work or you need to pull your grades up, commit your energy to improving at work or school. You're going to be happier if you grow as a person, and improving your confidence will show her that you're serious relationship material. 9. Now is a great opportunity to update your wardrobe, clean your home, and get a haircut. If she wants space to think about whether she wants to commit to you or not, there's no better way to push her in the right direction than to improve your confidence. 8. Chill on the heavy conversations. Download article. The last thing she'll want to do is talk about your relationship right now. If she wants space, she needs a little room to breathe. If you're still talking right now, text her jokes you overheard at work or discuss a movie you recently saw. Avoid prying into how she's spending her time or asking her questions about the state of your relationship. The more laid back you are, the more room you'll give the relationship to grow. Organically. 10. Wait for her to make the first move when it comes to the relationship talk. She'll revisit the state of your relationship when she's ready. It's perfectly fine to be flirty or remind her that you care about her, but don't throw a ton of I miss you or I love you so much texts at her, unless she wanted space, because she thought you didn't care about her, this is only going to make her feel pressured. 9. Write a letter to her. Download article. Even if you never send it, writing is a great way to process your thoughts. If you're feeling a little emotional or you're hurting, sit down with a pen and paper. Start writing about how you really feel about her. You could even do this every day in a journal. This is a therapeutic way to express yourself, and it's a great way to analyze your emotions and process the pain you're going through. 11. If you do reconnect and you ever discuss what the break was like for both of you, you could show her the letters to really demonstrate how you feel. You don't have to do anything with the letters. You can always throw them out if you find them embarrassing or you've written something negative. It's still a productive exercise either way. 10. Stay off of social media. Download article. You're just going to go crazy if you keep checking her Instagram or Facebook. Do yourself a favor and just stay off of social media for now. You could temporarily delete your accounts or take the apps off of your phone. Even if you don't plan on checking her account, you may accidentally scroll across something she posted. If that happens, you may feel down or start imagining the worst possible scenario if she posts a photo or status. 12. If you're feeling down, seeing a bunch of photos or status updates about how well other people are doing isn't going to do any good either. 11. Reconnect organically once she's open to it. Download article. Take things slow and let the relationship take its course. Naturally. If the two of you are meant for one another, it will happen. If she texts or calls you asking to go on a date or attend an event together, go for it. Just don't treat it as opportunity to jump her with questions.
about when she's done needing space or when she's ready to commit. Enjoy your time with her, treat her with respect, and let the relationship grow over time. 13. Avoid repeating any mistakes you made before. If she wanted more attention, give it to her. If she wanted more time to hang out with her friends, let her. Whatever it was. Just do your best to be a great partner for her. Grand gestures of devotion are great in the movies, but they can backfire if you overdo it just as the two of you are. Getting back into the swing of things. 12. Know when to let it go. Download article. If she isn't ready for the relationship you want, you may need to let it go. You cannot control what she does or what she wants, so let go of any expectations. You have needs and she has needs. If the two of you don't align on what you're looking for in a relationship, it may be best for you to move on. You deserve to be fulfilled and loved, so don't settle or give up on yourself. 14. It can take time to find the person who is right for you. If this relationship doesn't work out, remember that there are always more fish in the sea. It probably isn't what you want to hear right now, but it's true. Don't let her string you along. If she acts like you're her entire world one day and then turns around and gives you the cold shoulder on the next, stand up for yourself. If she isn't ready to commit, that's on her. Expert Q&A Question What should I do when a girl asks for space? Elizabeth Weiss, PSYD Relationship Psychologist Expert Answer Let her have her alone time. Everyone needs their space at some point. So give it to her. Not helpful zero helpful eight. Question. What does it mean to give space in a relationship? Elizabeth Weiss, PSYD. Relationship psychologist. Expert answer. It depends on the person who's asking for space, so it can mean different things to different people. The best way to find out what your partner needs is to ask them what they expect. You could say, I understand you need space and will respect your boundaries, but could you tell me what space means to you? Not helpful zero helpful five.